Welcome to the studios here at RTC TV Four in beautiful downtown Rochester. I'm Sports Director Steve Stricker, and hard to believe that the 2018-2019 boys basketball season's already coming to a close. But we're going to be talking some sectional action here with a guest that you guys probably all know, uh, Mr. Joe McCarter. Uh, Joe, talk a little bit about it. You you wear a lot of hats, right? You have. Uh, parent hat, you have a coach hat, you're part of the staff at Rochester High School, and then of course, uh, you know, you run RTC Communications. So talk a little bit about that balancing act with uh, with all those hats that you have to wear. Um, well, that's an interesting question. Um, yeah, I know it's fun. I mean, it keeps me busy. Um, obviously, my uh, family's had a long time passion for basketball, which uh, I got from my dad, and um, I love love being involved in that. I've done the freshman program here at Rochester for I think this is my eighth or ninth year, um, and I really enjoy it. I enjoy uh, working with the kids a lot, um, and I love the game. So that's that's kind of uh, my uh, therapy some days. <laughs> um, and then uh, of course here we're busy, um, but we've got a lot of great folks, and um, you know we continue to. Try to do everything we can for the community, and um, part of that is what uh, you and Scott and team do um, on the uh, RTC TV, and uh, I think our customers, as well as even folks out of this region, appreciate the coverage of all the sports and school activities, as well as some city council meetings and those types of things. Um, so, yeah, it's it can be a balancing act, but uh, um, it's fun, uh, keeps me busy. So just real quick, talk a little bit about, you know, you have a daughter that's swimming at Ball State. Um, you know, I've got a daughter that's a freshman at trying playing basketball. Talk a little bit about that transition and how that's going for her and, you know, just the, the stresses and stuff that you run into as a college athlete. Yeah, I'm sure you, you guys are seeing the same thing. It's, it's uh, I think, first of all, the student athlete has to love the sport um, and has to be driven. Um, it's different in college. Uh, it's not just something you do uh, three to five uh, after school um, and then in the off season when you feel like it. Um, it becomes more of a job, uh, but like any job, if you love it, um, it doesn't feel like a job. And um, so I think uh, the transition for our daughter who, who has loved swimming uh, for a long, long time, um, the swimming part was an easy transition. She just she gets to swim more uh, yeah. than she likes. Uh, the lack of free time, um, the balancing of studies and swimming uh, at college. Uh, I think that first semester was an adjustment um, just because it was a lot. You know, they require study tables of their freshmen, which is a good thing. I mean, as a parent, you like that. Um, and there's just some requirements. But uh, once she kind of got into the routine, uh, she's really enjoyed it. And uh, actually, their uh, MAC championships are over in Akron, Ohio. Next week, same week as our boys sectional. Uh, so talking about juggling, uh, yeah. that's what my wife Mandy and I will be doing. But um, yeah, she's she's really enjoying it, and uh, hopefully she'll have a good week next week. Looking forward too to uh, your youngest daughter and my youngest daughter going to be right. meeting up at uh, Argus here in a, a Thursday night. Right. On, uh, Probably by the time this airs, we'll yeah. uh, we'll have uh, have that behind us. But yep, um, sixth grade girls basketball got into swing. Uh, few weeks ago they haven't had many practices i'm sure yeah. you guys are battling the same thing um but they're having a lot of fun it's neat to see i think they've got uh just under 20 players out here at rochester and it's great to see all those uh young ladies being able to socialize and and get out there and learn how to work as a team and uh you know that's what middle school uh sports are all about great so uh we'll take a quick break here we'll be back with more here from rochester with uh, Joe McCarter, we're going to get into the brackets here in a moment. We're going to thank one of our uh, wonderful sponsors here on RTC TV4. We'll be right back. At Co-Alliance Propane, we treat our customers like neighbors because, well, that's what we are. When you trust Co-Alliance Propane as your seriously local propane provider, you're trusting a team of professionals who live, work, and watch the game from right across the county, not the country. A team that's close by and seriously dedicated to your safety and providing the best service possible. Find out more about Co-Alliance Propane's seriously local service and how you can get 50 gallons of propane free at CoAlliancePropane.com. All right, welcome back here to the studios at RTC TV4. Steve Stricker with Joe McCarter. And we're going to get right into the brackets here. Boys, uh, boys basketball sectionals. We're going to start at uh, the 3A sectional. 
That's going to be up at Wawa C. This is a six-team sectional. We got Northwood as the defending champs. A uh, little bit down this year, Northwood, uh, from what they've been in the past. And you can see the bracket there popping up behind us, uh, Northwood, Fairfield. Tippy Valley, just like the girls, got that first round bye, so they're going to be playing the winner of that Northwood-Fairfield game on Friday. Lakeland West Noble, going to be your second game on Tuesday. Wawa C waiting for the winner there. Uh, Joe, you've uh, played Tippy Valley, only team in that sectional. You guys lost to them in overtime. Uh, talk a little bit about this sectional and what your thoughts are. I think this is a good sectional. Um, you know, I think uh, obviously Fairfield <clears throat> is probably the favorite on paper just from a record standpoint. Um, I believe they they've got 15 wins. Um, I don't think they've played Valley. Um, I really like Valley. Um, uh, Patrick Chad does a really nice job. His kids from the start um, of the season have played really hard. Um, and if you look at what he talks about in the paper, and, and of course we saw him few times, uh, once obviously in person, um, but they just play hard and, and they're athletic. Mm -hmm. Uh, so they play really good man defense. Uh, they mix in their one, three, one, um, and they'll, they'll make it tough on whoever they play. So I really think that, uh, assuming Fairfield comes through, um, uh, over Northwood, which will be a competitive game. Um, but I think that, uh, the Valley Fairfield game, uh, will probably decide the sectional. Um, and I, I, it will not surprise me at all to see Valley come through there. Obviously, I hope they do. Right. The Valley did lose to Northwood, um, but they did not play Fairfield. So, I, you know, the winner of that Northwood-Fairfield game, like you said, going in playing Valley on uh, the first game on Friday, uh, the bottom half of that bracket, I don't know a whole lot about the uh, the teams there, Lakeland, West Noble, Wawa C, but if you look at the, the records there, I, I really think you're uh, dead on right there with that Valley uh, second round game being a, a pretty pivotal game. Yeah, I mean, Wawa C on their home floor, obviously they play a pretty tough schedule. They've only got five wins. I think West Noble's uh, 500. Um, but, you know, West Noble, uh, you know, I looked at a lot of their scores. They They haven't, you know, really beat anybody badly but uh they'll i think they'll they'll beat lakeland so you know valley's playing well um but yeah i think that uh, valley fairfield matchup in the semifinal um i think that's a big game all right so that's our 3a sectional up at wawa c so we're going to drop down to uh 2a and <coughs> get the winnemac sectional that's sectional number 34 uh this one ought to be an interesting sectional it's a 16 sectional Michigan City Marquette is your defending champs. Uh, Winnemac has had a really good season, and they're, they've got the home sectional. Uh, Winnemac 3-0 uh, versus sectional opponents, and uh, that includes a big 57-55 win versus Marquette. Right. So you look at the bracket as it comes up here, and uh, Winnemac drew North Newton in the first round, which you know should be a right. pretty easy one there for Winnemac. Second game on Tuesday is North Judson, Boone Grove. Ought to be a pretty easy one for Judson as well. And that, the second round games, then uh, Marquette has that first round bye, and they're going to be waiting for that winner, uh, potentially Winnemac, coming in on Friday at 6 30. Uh, that ought to be a good one right there. Yeah, I think this, uh, I mean, obviously, I, I think if you're Winnemac, you actually kind of like this draw. Um, you know, first of all, you're, you're at home. Right. Uh, you get North Newton to uh, knock any bugs out, uh, knock the rust off. Um, your home, uh, North News not very good, quite mm -hmm. honestly. Um, and then you get, uh, so you got a game under your belt. Yeah. Uh, whereas Marquette's going to come into that semifinal, you know, with some sectional jitters. So I, you know, Winnemac could look at this and go, wow, we got the long road. But I kind of like this if I'm Winnemac at Winnemac. And um, yeah, they, they've got a really nice team. Um, and they've, they've beaten some really good teams this year. Um, all their games, I think, have been competitive. Yeah. Um, I mean, even, you know, obviously their wins have not necessarily been competitive, but even, even when they've lost, uh, it's competitive. So I think, uh, I think Winnemac gets the sectional. They got a really good opportunity, and, and some of those wins, you know, we saw them play Plymouth uh, for the first time since, like, 62 at yeah. Winnemac, and, and they got that win, and they almost got a win against Logan Sport. That was a really close yep. game, came down to the wire, so... Uh, they've been tested. They've been, you know, through the fires, so to speak. Yeah, and I don't look at their schedule year over year, but if you look at their schedule this year, I think that they knew what they had, mm -hmm. and they kind of 
beefed it up yeah. um, because they did. They played Plymouth for the first time. Obviously, this is one of, their, one of Plymouth's better teams, but still, you didn't know that when you scheduled it a year or two ago. Right. Um, Logan Sport. Um, so, yeah, they've been tested. Um, yeah. It's a pretty uh, – even though there's, they've still got some youth – um, it's guys that play a lot of basketball. Yeah. Um, so they're they're experienced. Yeah. You got the Larkin boys, and then uh, they got is it Calvin Johnson. Yeah. Uh, oh, Calvin. The, the one that he had. Cal uh, Larkin had yeah. a twisted ankle. Yeah. Uh, one of the Larkin boys, and he was back yep. the other night against Caston and uh, played. So uh, they're going to be back to full strength. Yeah. So they've got a really nice team. Yeah. So really, really excited about that, and uh, I want to give a huge shout out to our crew over there, yeah. uh, Tim and and uh, Shay and and uh, uh, Colin and and uh, everybody there. Chad Compton, uh, man, he does a wonderful job on the camera for us. Chad Compton over there, but uh, Tim Gearhart has uh, stepped up and really done a great job for us on uh, production over there. Yep, I really, I know, I watched the uh, the Rochester game, um, and uh, he did a really nice job. Yeah. So uh, that's your Winnemac bracket. There, I think in, we're going to cover all those games, right? Yeah, we're going to cover all those games from Winnemac. So uh, looking forward to that. And you know, North Judson down there in the bottom half, we get some uh, some really good viewership from the North Judson area. So uh, you know, excited. We might have a, a flip flop uh, rematch of basically the girls sectional championship if Winnemac and Judson, you know, make yeah. it there. And I think Judson will come out of that bottom. I mean, they've, they've got a pretty nice team. Uh, they've got some good wins. Um, they and uh, Hebron will be a decent matchup. Um, uh, but I think uh, Judson comes out of the bottom and, and uh, hopefully will be facing Winnemac. All right, so that'll wrap up our first two brackets. We're going to take another quick break here on RTC TV4. We'll come back and we're going to talk Oak Hill bracket with Joe McCarter here in just a moment. This broadcast brought to you in part by these local sponsors. Enjoy the game with an ice-cold Coke. Locally owned and operated since 1907, Coca-Cola Bottling Company of Kokomo proudly supports 28 high schools in North Central Indiana. Our starting lineup of brands are sure to keep you hydrated on the sidelines and at home. Coca-Cola Bottling Company of Kokomo. RTC TV4 thanks you for watching tonight's broadcast. Sponsorship and advertising opportunities are available and free production is included with every sponsorship package. If you are seeing this, then your customers are seeing it too. RTC TV4, see for yourself. Please support the local sponsors who make this production possible. All right, welcome back here to the RTC TV4 studio. Steve Stricker, Joe McCarter, and uh, we've made it through our first two brackets, and we're going to drop down to the Oak Hill bracket, which is a 2A bracket. And uh, Joe, you know this one pretty well. You can see six teams. Oak Hill, your defending champions, they not only won the sectional last year, but uh, made it all the way down one state. Yeah. So different Oak Hill team, though. It is a different team, um, however. They're the defending state champions. They're on their home court. Yeah. Um, they're probably going to be coming right off of a girls' state championship. Yeah. Um, uh, that's obviously Saturday. Um, so they're going to have their fans are just going to be you know all in. Um, they'd be all in anyway coming off the state championship last year. But um, yeah, it's going to be the definite uh, home court advantage for them mm -hmm. in, in, in a big way. Um, they started the season one and seven. Uh, they're eight and five cents. And they actually beat Northwestern last night at Northwestern. Yeah. And Northwestern's ranked fifth in 3A. Um, so Oak Hill's playing a lot better. It's, yeah. I think it was one of those they had so much turnover, it took them half the season to figure out, you know, what they had and, and, and you know, what the new Oak Hill team was going to look like this year. But they're playing pretty well. I'm going to say Northwestern probably doesn't want to play any TRC competition <laughs> yeah, exactly. after getting knocked off by Southwood. Yeah. And then uh, Oak Hill. Yeah. So you look at the bracket, we'll pop that up right there. Uh, Rochester, not a bad draw. Uh, they've got Manchester in the first game and then uh, on Tuesday. Drop down on the second game on Tuesday, Wabash, North Miami. And just like the girls, North Miami didn't get a very favorable draw. Wabash, your top team as far as record goes in that sectional. North Miami gets them right out of the gate. Yeah, um, North Miami, that, that's probably the worst spot to be in. Uh -huh. Um and, uh, you know, you're playing um, a team that's got 17 wins right off the bat. 
Uh, if you can uh, pull off the upset, now you're playing the defending state champions on their home court. Yeah. Uh, and then if you knock that off, you're, you're in the... So, yeah, North Miami got a tough road. But I tell you what, uh, North Miami's banged up right now. Um, I talked to Coach Hawkins uh, Saturday. I saw him. And uh, they've got some injuries. But uh, they play hard, and they can disrupt you. Yeah. Um, and uh, I hope they get healthy for next week um, because they've had a really nice season. Um, and I, I really enjoy watching them play. Yeah, they do. They play very hard. And, you know, Coach Hawkins, it, it's, you know, I was at the Argus game when they played North Miami and just the experience that was on the floor. You know, you had Coach Mawson with 30 years and Coach Hawkins with 38 years. And uh, you wouldn't look at him and say, you know, this is a guy that's been coaching for 38 years. He's still got a lot of energy. Oh, yeah. And uh, he really, in his second year at North Miami, you can tell he's really working to turn that thing around. Yep. Yep. And, and he will. Yeah. So if you look at the bracket, uh, Rochester, uh, you talked about the tough road that North Miami has. Rochester, if they can get that one past Manchester, who beat them by one back in January, uh, you know, you got a Lewis Cass team that, yeah, they gave you a tough game, but I don't think that was probably your best game either. No, I think for us, uh, for Rochester, I think the draw was good. Um, you know, you, you can always draw up the, the best scenario. Um but uh, this was a, this is a good scenario. Obviously, Manchester beat us. Um, Manchester's a good team. Um, there's no doubt about that. They've got really good guard play, um, and uh, that'll be a very very competitive game. But uh, one that I think we should we should be able to compete very well at. And um, yeah, the winner of that game then gets a cast team that's that's down. Um, but again, cast has. You know, a couple of really good basketball players, and um, so that's not it's not like a buy. Yeah. Uh, so the winner of that Tuesday night game will have to play well, um, and then uh, hopefully uh, it'll be Rochester, and we'll move on to the championship. So let's uh, while we're here talk just a little bit deeper about this Rochester team. It's it's kind of been <clears throat> one of those years. You know, they've won some games that you're like, wow, that's a really good win, but then they come back and then they don't really compete in a game that you think that they should. And talk a little bit more about your zebras. Well, I think they've competed. Uh, I think they played hard. Uh, you know, I, I always, even with Indiana basketball, I always kind of chuckle when, when folks say that, uh, you know, teams just didn't compete or, you know, they were flat. And, uh, you know, that's uh, that's not the case with the Rochester team. Um, and, uh, you know, usually people that are saying that really can't explain why we may have lost a game or why the Hoosiers may be losing. Um but uh, you know, I watched the IU Purdue game last night, and IU competed hard. They mm-hmm. just got beat, and they couldn't they couldn't make a shot. Quite honestly, yeah. that's been a Rochester issue, um, some off and on, is we've had trouble uh, scoring the ball. Um, but defensively, I think they have played very very well, and they play hard. Um, so uh, you know, those are two pretty good ingredients, and if you can get the the ball to fall in the, in the in the hoop, then you're gonna uh, win some games. And the games we haven't, uh, it's been where we just haven't scored real well. Um, so I think uh, the the last loss we had um, before the Triton game, Peru, I think we shot 33 percent from the field. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and, and and had 21 turnovers. Um, as I was walking out of that game, somebody said, "Well, you had 21 turnovers. You're not gonna win any games with 21 turnovers. We won games with 21 turnovers." Mm-hmm. You're not going to win many games with 21 turnovers and converting 33% of your shots. Right. Um, so that combination, something's got to, you know, we, we've got to either shoot really well or, or limit turnovers. Um, but uh, I think defensively we'll, we'll be ready. And um, it, it should be a good sectional. Um, Wabash, I think Wabash comes in this sectional uh, with a lot of pressure. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they're, they're on paper they're the clear favorite. Uh, they've got the first winning record um, in 25 years um, that, that Wabash has had, um, and they're not just above 500; they're way above 500. Right. I think they're 17 and four, or, or, yeah. or something. And three of those four losses came in a row. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and coupled with that, they haven't won a sectional since 1967. Wow. Um, so, there's a lot of things stacked up mm-hmm. that that they know about, and this is the year. Um, doesn't mean, you know, next year or the year after they they won't be good as well. So I think they're coming in this section with a lot of pressure, um, Uh you know, and then, uh, if they do, uh, beat North Miami, uh, getting Oak Hill Uh at Oak Hill, Oak Hill's playing better. Um, so that'll be interesting on that side of the, of the bracket. Um, but as far as our side, 
Um, I think that uh, it'll be, you know, this whole sectional to me will line up as, as very, very competitive games. Um, you know, on paper, you may look at Wabash and go, wow, they're the only one. Well, Manchester's 11 and 10 after last night's loss to Whitco, but, um, you know, Manchester clearly has the best record, but I think this is a really competitive sectional. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, I think it will be, and uh, we're going to have uh, all those games for you here on RTC TV4. We'll have David Musselman, Brad Thomas over there on the call for you. And uh, it should be great action. Rochester tips off at uh, 6 o'clock on uh, Tuesday with their first one. Then we're going to follow it up with coverage of the North Miami Warriors. And we'll be back on Friday and Saturday over there as well. So ought to be a good one over there at Oak Hill. And uh, excited to get back over to Oak Hill Way. Yeah, yeah, it'll be uh, it'll be fun. We know a lot of folks over there. So um, it should be a good week. Yeah. Really have enjoyed uh, the extended coverage of Oak Hill on the girls' side. That's yeah. been fun. You know, those girls uh, really uh, enjoyed covering those games. And yeah. thanks for letting us go down and cover those there at Logan Sport. That was a, yeah, a that fun was one. fun. Yeah. I enjoyed watching it as well. And um, we wish uh, the Oak Hill Lady Eagles uh, all the best Saturday. Yeah. All right. So we're going to take a quick break here. Thank uh, another one of our sponsors. We'll be back and we'll finish up with our two class 1A brackets in just a moment here on RTC TV4. When you shop at Oliver Ford Lincoln in Plymouth, you're treated like family and it's a full service experience. Our expert service team can keep your vehicle happy for years, from simple maintenance to major repairs. We even provide a loaner car if your vehicle needs to stay overnight. So we have an excellent source of demonstrator vehicles offered to you with substantial discounts. So search our inventory online or stop in for a test drive at Oliver Ford Lincoln in Plymouth. All right, welcome back here to the RTC TV4 studio. Steve Stricker, Joe McCarter. And we're going to wrap up our boys' sectional preview show with our final two sectionals. We're going to go down to Class A for both of these. Our, uh, our first one is over at West Central, and that's sectional number 50. This is a seven-team uh, sectional, and Covenant Christian is your defending champion. And Covenant Christian coming in with a, uh, a very good season, 18-4, and four, as they come in clear-cut favorites on this one. Uh, so we have one team here. The brackets, we're going to pop those up. The brackets, uh, West Central has that first round by. Tri-County Covenant Christian going to be playing the first game on Tuesday. Actually, the only game on Tuesday in this one. And then on Wednesday, we got <coughs> South Newton, North White. And then the second game on Wednesday is the one we're going to cover. It's going to be Pioneer versus Caston with those two winners meeting on Friday. So, uh, Joe, take a look at that bracket there. What's your thoughts on the uh, sectional there at West Central? Yeah, I think, obviously, Covenant Christian's probably the favorite on paper as well as when you look at the um, schedules of each team. Um, you know, they'd, they'd probably have to be the one you'd pick. I think Pioneer um, can get to the championship game and give them a battle. Pioneer's very deep. Um, I was really impressed when we played them, and, and I've watched them on film a couple times, and, you know, they can go eight or nine deep. They've got a combination of, of, of athleticism that will really disrupt you defensively to some guys that can really shoot the ball. So um, I've been a little surprised, uh, you know, with some of their scores, just like, as you said, with, with Russia scores. But unless you see the games, you're not sure what's what's happening. Um, and, of course, the other thing with this uh, with this weather is we've had a lot of teams, and I think Pioneer's one of those, that have, have, have had games bunched up. Mm -hmm. And that can really affect um, affect the results. So... I really like Pioneer in this sectional. Um, I don't know that they'll knock off Covenant Christian, but I think that they can uh, give them a pretty good game in the championship. Um, Kasten's going to play hard, um, and uh, I think Kasten Pioneer game could be a good game. Uh, Kasten's going to have to shoot the ball well, but but they'll they'll play hard um, and, and they'll battle for sure. That's the one thing with Kasten all year long. They've you know only won three games, but you know just like last night they played Winnemac and. They were right there. Oh, yeah. uh, it didn't end up, you know, the final score was kind of lopsided, but I was watching the first half, and Kasten and Winnemac, they were going at it pretty good. And uh, Pioneer, like you said, they they do rely a lot on their shooting. Mm -hmm. And I've seen games, you know, where they're on fire. And, you know, just like with the with the Rochester game in that fourth quarter, it's like yeah. they just started lighting it up. The yeah. next thing you know, they've scored 25 points. Yeah. And uh, they can put them up in a hurry, but then they can go cold too. Yeah. And uh, that's that's the the you know risk with the outside shooting, but um, you know I've seen them do line changes and substitutions where yeah. and that shows their depth. And yeah, it can really help in a sectional. Yeah. Um, so um, you know it it should be 
uh, good, uh, competitive game, especially on the bottom half of the bracket. And then uh, hopefully uh, uh, Pioneer or Casting, whoever wins that game, can, can challenge Covenant Christian in the championship. Yeah, the South Newton North White game, you know, North White, I was kind of surprised to see that they knocked off Pioneer, you know, a week or so ago yeah. there. Uh, kind of, uh, you know, Pioneer's right there in that same, you know, area as, as Pioneer with an 8 and 11 record. And so that ought to be a good couple games there. Pioneer uh, should get past Caston. And then, uh, you know, if it turns out to be North White Pioneer, that ought to be a good rematch. It should be. I was like you. I was a little surprised at that score, but again, we don't know what's what's you know going on with their schedule and, and, and those type and how many times they've been able to practice. But uh, yeah, I think that, like I said, I think that bottom half track will be good games. So it ought to be a good sectional over there at, uh, at West Central, and uh, we'll drop down here to our final uh, sectional bracket, which is going to be the Triton sectional, sectional number 51. It's got two of our teams facing off again in the uh, first game there. Uh, seven teams in this one. This is uh, Elkhart Christian defending champion on this one. But, uh, you know, much like we saw, you know, in some of the other sectionals, Elkhart Christian not quite the team they were last year. Uh, you've got number nine, Argus. Uh, the only team that we have of our eight that comes in ranked in the coaches' pool, they come in number nine. Uh, I don't know that there's a real tough uh, road for Argus to get to the sectional championship no matter what the draw was but you look at the draw for Argus and it couldn't have been much easier yeah I mean I think the sectional sets up well for them quite honestly to your point I mean I don't think there's a bad draw I think getting uh, getting the opposite of uh, Elkhart Christian the defending you know sectional championship is probably a good thing um, so you make sure the guys are ready to go but because uh, Argus is a better team than Elkhart Christian um so, um, yeah, I think this, this sets up well for Argus. I mean, Argus is, I mean, they're, they're so fun to watch. Um, very fundamental, um, just, you know, seem to always be in control. Um, and, uh, you know, they just do a really good job. Um, so I, I don't see, you know, I don't want to jinx them, but I don't, I don't see any, any issues for them getting through this sectional and quite honestly, potentially getting, getting a deep run because they can play with anybody. Yeah. They've got size, you know. With with Kindig, they're they're pretty big, and even their uh, their small forward guards combinations with Vanderweel. And I tell you, the one that really impresses me is uh, Owen Nifong. Yeah. And I don't know if you've watched him much, yep. but really strong kid, and he's just so athletic and and uh, junior there, and really does a great job. And of course, Sam Manikowski runs the point for him. And you know, anytime you got a, a team led by Gordon Mawson, you know right. they're going to be fundamentally sound. Yeah, and that's the thing. I mean, as, as they advance, hopefully, into the regional and, and, and beyond, I mean, you know, they're going to have some maybe matchups on paper. You're going to go, ooh, that's, that's going to be – you're not going to run away from Argus. Mm -hmm. I don't care how good your team is. I mean, they're going to keep you within our – you know, to where they can get you at the yeah. end. And um, that's why I really like their chances to make a, a nice run in this tournament. Yeah. So we'll look forward to that. they got a uh, – like we said, a nice draw. They've got Culver in the first round. We're going to see that game at 7.30 on Tuesday. That's our only Tuesday game there at Triton. Uh, so the Culver team, you know, talk a little bit about them because they're one of our schools. Kind of struggled a lot this year. Um, they've got some younger kids, though. It looks like the program might turn the corner, but it's going to be a rough year or two for them. Uh, Coach Kruger, I know well. I played, you know, a couple of years in high school with him at Culver. So, you know, they, they've got a little bit of a, a tough road to hoe as far as uh, getting back to being competitive. But uh, ought to be a good matchup there in round one. Yep. Uh, they got OD coming in second game. OD and Culver going to face off uh, on Thursday or Wednesday night. You know, for section or uh, senior night for Culver. But OD coming in at this point, zero and nineteen. Yeah. They're struggling. Yeah, they're really struggling. So Argus really has a pretty clean path to get to that uh, sectional championship game. And, uh, you know, looking down at the bottom half, Triton did give Argus a little bit of a game. I, I, I want to see that Triton-Elkhart Christian game. I think that'll be a good one there at Triton. Yeah, I do too. I think Triton, uh, you know, I've watched them a little bit. Uh, obviously, we played them last Saturday. Uh, you know, we, we caught them in a real tough spot for them. It was their third game in uh, four days. And uh, and our game with them, that third game was uh, afternoon game at our place. Um, so they certainly struggled in that game. But I've seen them play, and they, you know, they're a lot better team than that. Um, so I think that uh, I think Triton will come out of the bottom. I think Triton will beat Elkhart Christian. It'll be interesting to see how Triton bounces back from this. 
I think it's eight games in 22 days because of the weather. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, the sectional is gonna gonna feel like a, a breeze to them schedule wise compared to what they've been through over the last two weeks. So if they can bounce back and um, you know uh, get their legs under them, uh, it's a young Triton team, mm-hmm. uh, but they could go into that sectional with with a lot of energy and and um, certainly in shape after the schedule <laughs> they've been in. So uh, yeah, I think they'll I think they'll compete. I, I uh, look for them to come through that bottom bracket and uh, give Argus a, a, a competitive game in the championship. Yeah, you, you never want to, uh, to see a bad game in the sectional championship, and, and Triton at home, despite their record, you know, if they make it there, they're right. going to give uh, Argus everything that they have. Yep. So, ought to be an interesting matchup there, and really looking forward to all the uh, basketball sectionals uh, coming up. It ought to be really good. All eight of our schools uh, have some opportunities, uh, doing very well this year, and we really appreciate you for uh, having the confidence in us <clears throat> and allowing us to pick up, you know, four more schools this year and uh, move our uh, broadcast to uh, to eight schools. Yeah, I think it's worked out well, and uh, as you said, I think these sectionals will be uh, will be fun to watch. I think um, you know, in every one of them, one of our schools has has a real opportunity to to win the sectional. Yeah. Um, so that'd be that'd be neat. Uh, make your guys' regionals <laughs> difficult. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, it should be a fun week. It always is. I I, I look forward to it. Well, like you said, though, after the last couple of weeks of, of rearranging all these schedules and these games and everything that was going on with the weather, uh, it doesn't matter what you throw at us. That's true. That's yeah. going to be pretty easy. It's all yeah. in one day. So yeah. You guys are used to it. Yeah. So, well, we really appreciate it. Uh, thanks for coming down. I know you got a thanks very busy me. schedule, and we'll let Enjoyed you get it. back to it. And appreciate everybody for tuning in here to our 2018-2019 Boys Basketball Sectional Preview Show. For Joe McCarter, Scott Sager, back behind the camera, I'm Steve Stricker. Thanks for watching. Townhome Furnishings in Rochester is the place to shop for all of your furniture needs. Sofas, recliners, love seats, dining sets, bedroom sets, mattresses, outdoor furniture, and more. All in your hometown. Stop out and see Don, Mary Kay, Linda, or Joe. They want to help you find the exact pieces to fit your needs. Shop online at townhomefurnishings.com. Hometown service, down home style, town home furnishings.